Yes. Okay, wow. stand by. Stand by. I love stand technology. By, All right. Wait, we need stand by music. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Kevin? <laughs> Kevin? Is that actually is that an attempt at Hercules music? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my own invention, but thank you. Hey! Kevin Sorbo, let me Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Kevin, I'll thanks my, for... I'll make my kids do that every morning I wake up. <laughs> That's a good way to do it. I used to do every time I come downstairs. And now, your mother. Yay! <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Kevin, just so people get an idea, um, Kevin looks uh, almost as, as good looking as I. <laughs> <laughs> almost, honey. All you people that know how, how right. incredibly beautiful I am. Do you, do you have a face for radio? Yes, <laughs> I do. I absolutely do have a face for radio. <laughs> but he's doing? worn more makeup than yeah. I've ever in my entire life. Right now, at this moment. <laughs> well, Kevin, first of all, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate that. Thank you. And big fans, and I want to say that it's, it's always fun to watch somebody who's not only good-looking, biking style, but um, you come off very bright, and you're great at comedy. I loved you in Spartans. The, it was so funny. Oh, my God. We laughed so hard. <laughs> I bet. I, I, I was sitting the, first, the first time we had to hold hands and skip when we go into the... <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, they should have recorded all of our, our rehearsals because it was ridiculous. I know. You know, the behind-the-scenes stuff is so much funnier. I always oh. wanted to have just, like, a little camera on my glasses or something filming all this. Because everybody that's creative like that seems to have the best sense of humor. Except wow. for these guys. You know, I don't yeah, know. Don't, how, hey, hey, hey. Well, <laughs> I said on, on both my series, you know, Hercules is one thing, but Andromeda, which I shot for five years after that. That's what it was. They said they should, they should, re, they, re, they should tape our rehearsals because it's just <laughs> ridiculous. And the outtakes, and people dig that stuff Yeah, but a lot anyway. of times they can't show that on no, but you can sell, you because know, um... You, you always, wasn't always, you know, X-rated or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It certainly, it certainly was on occasion. Well, <laughs> well, like, when we're in the studio, the, once you stop and once anybody leaves, then all the engineers and the producers and the musicians and everybody's telling jokes and just being themselves. And that's funnier and better than any well, record. Well, how many world. times have we sat in the green room and yep. jammed? And I just made all. you guys laugh so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or we said we should have recorded this, right? And always. There was always. a time with you and the boys from Skinner at the piano that was fabulous, but we just didn't record. Oh, yeah. No, no, there's nothing that was there. Great. Anyway, back to you, Kevin. Back to you, Sorry. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, back to me. Oh, yeah. Me. <laughs> I bet they didn't have to airbrush your abs as much as they did everyone else, though, right? <laughs> oh, no, I was still in re reasonable good shape. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, speaking, of, speaking of comedy, how about the new movie? That's not a comedy, I mm. The new movie? It's, isn't it a heartwarming story that we need you to know tell what, there's a lot. Actually, there's a lot of comedy in it. It's called What If. Uh -huh. It opens August 20th. Oh, wow. That's almost my birthday. And, oh, really? Yeah. Well, birthday to you. <laughs> and um, it's a, um, you know, I, it's like a faith-based movie. I don't want to, you know, it, it's weird. It's like Hollywood has done such a great job of, like, scaring people if you say faith-based movie. It's just, it's a movie that's got some values to it, which Hollywood never wants to put out. They want to show the misery and the bad side of life. Mm -hmm. That's what they like to glorify their, their world in. And um, ever since the success of Blindside, all the studios finally perked up and said, wow, we're not really servicing 90% of the country. Maybe yeah. We make Hello. That have some decent values and good messages and, you know, the triumph over tragedy stories that people actually love. So uh, this movie is sort of a cross between It's a Wonderful Life and a reverse It's a Wonderful Life and The Family Man that Nick Cage was in, Aww. where I play a guy that uh, during my 20s, I should have married this woman. I said, look, I got this great job possibility. I'm going to take off for a while. I'll be back. Of course, flash forward 15 years. I never did come back. And now I'm a high-powered executive, and I, you know, all I care about is materialistic things, and I care about my hot little materialistic fiancé. And I am visited by an angel in the form of John Ratzenberger. Nice. <laughs> who, uh, I plays love a, it. Plays a curmudgeon He's a angel and slaps me up a little bit and gives me a chance at uh, a, a peek at my life if I had gone down the road that I was supposed to go down. They so. could have filmed that in Sarasota. They could have filmed people that off the street. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. It's, it's, no, but it's a, it's, a, it's a nice movie. It was it was fun. We shot up Michigan. Christy Swanson's in it. Mm. Uh, Debbie Ryan, who's a big hot uh, Disney commodity right now, and she plays my daughter, and she was wonderful. And we just had a, we had a great time doing it. We just had two premieres in Chicago and Grand Rapids just this past weekend. Grand Rapids, we were at a, uh, a church called Harvest, which is huge, and three thousand six hundred people came to watch. Sweet. Nice. They turned a thousand people away. It was oh wow. wow! Well, I'm and gonna. I've been at premieres before, but never like that. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I'll tell you if you go to, and I I think correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin. It's whatifthemovie.com. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's 
What? The, the whatifmovie.com. Oh, or they can go to whatif at pureflix, P-U-R-E-F-L-I-X.com as well. But if you go and watch that trailer, and I watched it today twice, I will tell you the trailer itself is a moving trailer. And it's one of those, and he's right, you know, you hear faith-based and this and that. It's, it's, it's everyday life. That's what this is about. It's, it's every day life. life. I, I, I've had, I've had um, some of my friends are atheists, and I had them, they came over for a screening, and they were teared up. They were laughing. They were mm -hmm. And they said, you know what? That was just a great movie. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you know, my mother, um, I was raised by my very fascinating, intelligent mother, and uh, what I describe her as an intellectual beatnik, I guess. And she was all about reading and everything like that. And she was uh, so poor, she just would take me to this place that used to be called Teatro. It was a dollar theater, and it was always... French films, German films, and Woody Allen films, which is great. So my whole sense of humor comes from Monty Python, <laughs> Bugs Bunny, Woody Allen, and then all these French films. And the thing about Europe that I loved about cinema, you'd always see at the end that it was uh, supported by or, you know, even paid in full by the government. And they were just all about, the, it was all about story, dialogue, and the people. And so as a kid growing up, you just leave there with this great sense of, of humanity, because that's what art is, is like the exchange of the human experience. And then you... And then you watch Hollywood movies, and not that all Hollywood things are bad, but it's like we get out of balance with it. And, and I, love, I love now, it seems like there's a new direction that, that actors like yourself that have a face and a name out there. I see a lot of them doing um, films in England or Australia or whatever, and I, I know that you've been all over the world. And well, we have to go there because the only way to get a job in Hollywood right now is to go somewhere else. Australian or English or Canadian. Otherwise, you can't get hired as an yeah. American. That's amazing, <laughs> you know. It's, but it's kind of an interesting uh, phenomenon. It is interesting, and I like telling people about it because I think that they don't really understand. I don't. That's one thing I like about this show is I think they don't understand what's what really goes on and how connected they are to the people. Like in this town alone, just even being able to talk to you through Nick and stuff, and understanding the background of the music business and the and the movie business. And also, Kevin, with your atheist friends that you had over, um, were any of them agnostic? Because I was wondering if you could be an agnostic and an atheist at the same time. I don't know what that has to do with anything which just came up. <laughs> Are you looking for controversy here? No. Do you want conflict? Yes. Why do artists always what? need conflict? No, because he went to the seminary. Because she hasn't hit me or anything. He went into the seminary and he was going to be a priest. And That's me. Then he changed his mind became a rock star in New York. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A, a metal a metalhead. <laughs> that's true. Hey, uh, I can't wait to see this. I'm you, telling you. Because you're saying to yourself, really, no sex forever? <laughs> that's, exactly, that's, what, that's exactly it. I swear to God, that's exactly it. But no, I'm not going to be able to do I that. No, I'm not going to 38 to get married. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kevin, just uh, real quick.